you and good afternoon, everyone. Concrete, a mixture of cement, water, and rock aggregates, is the most widely used material in the entire world. In fact, over 30 billion tons of concrete are produced every year. But while it's all around us, even above our heads right this moment, uh, what we don't often see about concrete is its carbon footprint. Cement, the main component that makes concrete and makes it strong, emits pro approximately 0.8 tons of CO2 for every ton of cement produced. This adds up to over 3 billion tons of CO2 every year, or roughly 7% of global total emissions. Most of this CO2 comes from releasing of uh, CO2 from limestone to produce lime. The, the second highest source is the, the intense heat required to um, make cement from lime and clay. Our um, research seeks to reinvent this process of, CO2, of carb, uh, cement production by closing its CO2 loop and making it a closed loop process as such. The first step of our process begins similarly to cement production by um, quarrying lime and uh, quarrying limestone and producing lime. But instead of emitting the CO2, we instead capture it and separate it from the gas stream using a selective membrane, and then we reuse it as a feed material in the next step. In our, in our, to fabricate our building elements, we mix lime in, uh, into beams and columns using 3D printing, then expose it to CO2 under high pressure to form a final product composed of limestone. Uh, this increases its strength and also sequesters our CO2. Um, we designed these pieces to be uh, reusable, um, rapidly assemblable building elements, which can be disassembled to be reused later. But when their lifetime is finally over, we can recycle them by heating them, heating them again to produce lime and CO2, and then we can re repeat the cycle without um, pouring any more limestone. So our team has uh, taken a, has become a multidisciplinary team um, looking to uh, investigate the processes of CO2 separation, lime carbonation, and 3D printing on a lab scale. Uh, our team member, Cheng Wei Lin, has been working. Uh, he's advised by Dr. Rick Kainer, and he's investigating how to improve CO2 selectivity of these separation membranes. These membranes act as molecular sieves by separating the CO2, allowing it to pass, while preventing uh, larger oxygen and nitrogen molecules to pass through. By tuning the chemical composition of these membranes, we can achieve CO su superior CO2 permeability and improved CO2 selectivity, which is the ratio between permeability of CO2 and other um, gas species. Dr. Bu Wang and I have been focusing on investigating the actual mechanisms of the carbonation reaction by which CO2 is incorporated into limestone. We have found the reaction to be quite rapid, reaching over 80% completion within two hours. And also we found that it can um, provide strength. This is a SEM image that shows limestone colored in pink uh, based on its elemental analysis. And you can see that it's forming on silica grains in a cohesive layer. This could provide strength and binding aggregates as the way um, normal cement does in concrete. Finally, we've been working on developing scalable processes for 3D printing of building materials. So we're looking how, uh, this is an example of a binder jetting pr uh, printer, which deposits uh, layers of an adhesive binder onto powders layer by layer to make a 3D object. Um, we are looking at how to integrate this carbonation process with 3D printing and to create uh, material components with spatially varied mechanical properties. Our next steps are to integrate all of these processes and show them, demonstrate them at a pilot scale test. Uh, we are looking to make a facility that could be capable of producing 100 kilograms of building material per hour. And then with this um, facility, we hope to um, optimize the, each of the process, pr process parameters and fully characterize the final product. We hope to bring a truly dis a disruptive technology to the construction industry, one that focuses on a cradle-to-cradle -cradle approach to CO2 and bodies uh, improved durability and uh, unprecedented design flexibilities to create the construction material of the future. Thank you. Awesome, awesome. Um, who else here jumped a little bit when he said we had concrete over our heads? I kind of like Whoa. some big, uh, big. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Um, so this is so cool. Uh, do you, would tell us about some of the properties of the blocks that come out. Is it? I mean, you're, you're taking CO2, building concrete. Are there advantages to concrete that would come out of your 3D printing process versus? We can definitely make there more be more advantages. So we're looking on controlling 
spatially having um, gradiented properties. So you could have something that's more stiff where it needs to be by, by using uh, the material a lot more efficiently. So we're using different adhesive binders mixed in with the cementation process from carbonation to try to get the best strength and properties. And 3D printing also allows you more flexibility in your shape. So you can really use material more efficiently for better designs. Right now, everything's square around us just because it's easiest to pour. And so using this, we can make actually good use of material. Ladies and gentlemen, the future of buildings.